What's popping, everybody? All right, so this is about personal storylines, and we'll get into kind of what they're talking about here. But I actually wanted to extrapolate this idea and put it towards classes as well. Okay, so you'll see what I mean in one second. So let's go ahead and read what the original post actually says. Personal storylines. I mean, it's cool that everything doesn't revolve around our character all the time, but I think for a few years, I haven't felt any personal reason or connection that my character has for doing these quests. The base game was about getting your soul back eventually, along with stopping Moloch Ball. Just the main storyline, though. There were two kind of story arcs that you followed the entire time, and that was of the original story of who our character is, and then also in each of the base game zones, you had the story arc progressing through the Aldmeri Dominion, the Daggerfall Covenant, and the Evanheart Pact, right? Um, some players could RP loyalty to their faction as well in the zone. So that wasn't really, it, that's like an entirely separate story though. That wasn't really tied to our character as much. It was about learning about the alliances, right? Then there's stuff like Somerset, where you reunite with a long lost friend and the villain is also kind of an old friend. What do you think? Do you prefer being the kind of nameless mercenary who defeats the baddie? Or do you want some quests where your reasons for doing stuff are more than just save the day? So I'm okay, and I'm actually very for not constantly being this huge named hero. I played World of Warcraft for a long time, y'all know that, and that was a very centric thing. Um, throughout many years in World of Warcraft. And so it was always kind of funky for new players because they would call you, you know, you'd be thrown into a DLC well past the base game and they would call you the hero of so-and-so and call you the savior of so-and-so. And you're like, I just started the game. I haven't saved anything, right? And so I like it that we're essentially being thrown into the middle of a conflict and we are just a player in that conflict uniting with other people around us, whether it's players for a dungeon, players for a trial, or with other NPCs or non-player characters in the story, and we work towards a common goal. I think the issue with these storylines, especially lately, is they're very, very commonly themed around the same exact thing, and that is a big Daedric entity comes in, threatens the world in some way, whether that's the end of the world, the safety, whatever, and it is our job to stop it. That is what the theme has been for a while. And if you actually go on YouTube and you look up the announcement trailers for a variety of the different expansions, you'll see that one of the most popular ones in recent history was High Isle. And that was because they promised to bring Elder Scrolls back to the classic feeling of political intrigue in conflict, right? And so it was not this world-ending entity and us coming to destroy that. It was, you know, political intrigue, assassination attempts, stuff like that, that we're very used to in the main Elder Scrolls games. Okay? So that's, that's the thing. All right? Now, what I want to extrapolate from this is, yes... The one thing that I've actually really liked, and I liked Necrom's story a lot, I love the multi-year story arcs. If we are going to go that route more times than not, where we have this big Daedric entity threatening the world, I want it to be developed over at least a couple years. I prefer a few years, honestly. And it's not because it leaves us on cliffhangers, it's not because of that, but it, it allows us to develop a sense of attachment to characters that you don't typically see in just year-long stories like this. There are many characters that we met in Blackwood, outside of Evely, many characters that we met in all of these expansions, Greymore, whatever, that are not like, you know, the original companions like Lyris Titanborn or Evely, that I don't really remember, right? And it's because we're not exposed to them. We don't see them over and over again like many other characters. We've seen Evely in Rothgar. We saw her in... Um, in Orsinium, when we saw her in Blackwood. So we're able to develop a connection to her. Lyris has appeared in both the original storyline and Greymore, right? We've seen Baragon in a variety of places as well. We met him in Blackwood, and now he's coming back in Gold Road. I like this theme of bringing back these characters from old storylines that many people like and 
getting to know them better, getting a sense of attachment to them. I think that's more important is character development and more drawn out stories. I don't want stories to be longer just to be longer. I want them to be longer and good. And I want them to develop ideas and develop characters more than they have in the past. And I think Necrom's doing that. I think Necrom's going back to that. One of the best story arcs, in my opinion, was the Vardenfell Clockwork City Somerset story. Uh, Shadow over Morwen is, I think, is what it was, um, or maybe that's the one that we're in now. I'm blanking on the name, but you know what I'm saying. That story arc, I loved how it involved a couple of years. I love how Necrom is continuing into Gold Rib. I think that's very, very cool. The second thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is not just personal storylines, but I'd also absolutely love to see class storylines. Now, if you're a lore junkie, you may know where the classes came from. Maybe some of them are pretty self-explanatory. But what if, as part of the main story, and before you actually engage with the main story, you got to do a class storyline that you unlocked every 10 levels, a different quest, and you were able to progress it. And at the end of it, you understood the origins of your class and how it actually, you know, fit into the environment, into Tamriel around you, right? And so then every single time that they update the game and they bring in a new class, you get a new storyline. You get to experience that. It tells you about the lore, the origins of the classes, right? Because in typical Elder Scrolls games, obviously Oblivion had classes, right? But they were very self-explanatory. They were very self-explanatory. You had the mage. You know what that is. You had the warrior, the knight, the archer, like the thief. Like, you know, just from the name, you know what that is. What is a dragon knight, right? What is an arcanist? You may not know, if you're not an Elder Scrolls fan looking in, you may not know what that even means. And so having some of these classes when you come in and doing storylines to explain exactly what that is, where the origins of the class came from and how it is now a combat specialty within the world, I think would be pretty cool. Why are the players really and the big bad enemies the only ones that have this power? You don't see guards with the with the same I mean, they have like the Dragon Knight chain and the Talon Sword. Are they all Dragon Knights? You know? Why are guards not night blades? Why are guards not sorcerers? You have like lots of these I don't want to call them inconsistencies, but you have these open plot lines that you could actually address by putting in these storylines. Imagine if you got like a really, really cool class unique. Um, and I know that's kind of a touchy subject after the class set styles from Infinite Archive, but imagine if you had a thematic set of style pages and weapon styles for each class that you could earn through these, right? Imagine if you had a class specific mount and pet. And maybe you could choose difficulties in this storyline between normal and veteran just for just for fun. I think that that would be cool because it would not only tie you to the world more, but it would tie you to your class more. And you would understand a lot more about your class in doing so. I think it would be an interesting way to introduce you to mechanics. Maybe you could make it the first mission, the tutorial. And every single class had its own tutorial in the beginning where you walk through kind of a class tutorial section in the beginning, and they taught you about your first three abilities, the basics of the game, and what each of your skill lines kind of means. That could be really cool. That could be really cool. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you think that we're pretty disconnected from the world in modern day stories? Do you wish that we were kind of going back to our roots, like the original storyline? Do you think a class storyline would be cool to you know, understand the origins of the class and how it fits into Tamriel, let me know. Love talking to you guys as usual. Really appreciate all the support. Can't wait to talk to you guys again. Uh, remember to like and subscribe for more daily ESO content like this. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.